Tonight, eBay says change your password. Nest smoke alarms are ready to go back on sale. Get ready for Google ads everywhere and prepare yourself for a very special pizza day. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 92 for Wednesday, May 21st, 2014. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. eBay has informed its users about a cyber attack on its system between late February and early March that compromised a database containing encrypted passwords and other non-financial data like customers' names, encrypted passwords, email addresses, physical addresses, phone numbers, even birth dates. Now, the company it sa says it has no evidence that any unauthorized activity happened, no evidence that users' financial info or credit card details were accessed. Those are stored separately from the password data. They're also encrypted, but the company still says users should change their passwords. This is starting to sound very familiar. Interestingly, the company also said that the attack compromised a small number of employee login credentials meaning the attackers had unauthorized access to eBay's corporate network. The company says it's now working with law enforcement and security experts to investigate the issue further. A story that Nest Labs is recalling 440,000 smoke alarms that may not have properly functioning alarms because of a feature that allowed a user to temporarily silence the alert by waving their arms at the units made the rounds today, but it appears to be a much delayed media reaction to the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission's recall from April, even though an update to Nest Protect fixed the problem by disabling WAVE. What happened is the CPSC ordered the recall since Nest Protect doesn't actually require a Wi-Fi connection to work. Now, Nest is already offering an automatic update to disable this feature for users who are connected to the internet and linked to an account, and also says it hasn't received any reports of incidents, injuries, or property damage. Next was acquired by Google earlier this year. It halted new sales of the alarms last month after this problem became apparent. The company now says it will start selling new Next units in the coming weeks. A class action lawsuit was filed today in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California against Google over its AdSense platform over allegations from a former employee that the company is canceling the AdSense accounts of some con consumers to avoid paying out revenues. Now, Matt Cutts, the head of Google's WebSpan team, says the claims have been investigated and are complete BS that's a quote, and a conspiracy-laden fake. The class action was filed on behalf of a California firm, Free Range Content, which says it's owed $40,000 in fees after Google canceled its account. In the next few weeks, Facebook will roll out an opt-in feature in its iOS and Android app status composer, which can activate your phone's microphone to identify a TV show or maybe a song that you're listening to and tag it in your news feed post. Friends can then listen to either a 30-second preview of a song via APIs from Spotify, RDO, and Deezer. Or if it's a TV show, see a link to that show's page. Facebook says 5 billion posts have already used that option to share what you're feeling, what you're doing, or what media you might be enjoying. And this is just the next phase of that information. The new feature will directly compete with audio ID companies like SoundHound and also Shazam!, Though in Shazam's case, it has an index of over 25 million songs and reports 90 million users, so Facebook hasn't exactly killed them off yet. Would you like to submit a video to a Yelp review? Well, too bad you can't do that. Oh, actually, yes, you can. The company is adding a new video feature to its app to allow users to upload short clips along with photos, which is designed to help reviewers better describe the atmosphere of a restaurant or a store or some other small business that's featured on Yelp. Each video can be between 3 and 12 seconds long, although Yelp is saying it's just giving the video functionality to its elite users at first in early June and will roll the feature out to the rest of its user base later on. Vimeo has launched Copyright Match, which is a system that it explains in a blog post is designed to, quote, respect the boundaries of copyright law and the rights of other creators. 
The company says its service is about showcasing original work and not for pirated content like TV shows or movie screeners or pro sports broadcasts. Copyright Match will automatically capture an audio fingerprint from a portion of your video, then look for a potential copyright match. If it finds one, you get an email alerting you of the problem. To avoid some of the issues that YouTube has experienced with his own copyright flagging feature, we at Twit know it well, Vimeo says that video creators can appeal false matches or replace audio that's triggered a music match with a selection from Vimeo's own music store. Coming up, when is Bitcoin Pizza Day and are you ready for it? I hope so. But first, I'm joined by Eric Limer, associate editor over at Gizmodo. Hey, Eric. Hey, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here. Let's talk about an article that went up on Gizmodo today called Google Wants to Put Ads on Thermostats and Everything Else You Own. What does that mean? So uh, this story comes from uh, something that the Wall Street Journal dug up, which was a SEC filing. Of Google was trying to explain why they didn't want to uh, disclose their mobile ad revenue. And the, the explanation that they gave was that uh, because in the future, uh, mobile ad revenues can be more than just on phones and whatnot, and it could be on things like uh, refrigerators and thermostats were two of the examples they gave. And so in the wake of the recent, their recent acquisition of uh, Nest, that kind of like struck a chord with some people and, and you know, made, made everybody sort of think about what it would really be like to start getting ads on your thermostat, because that's something that clearly Google's been thinking about. Yeah, so in a December letter to the SEC, which uh, came out yesterday, Google mentioned refrigerators, car dashboards, thermostats, glasses, and watches and said that was just a few of the possibilities. So, you know, we, we talked about the Nest thermostat earlier in the show. Google apparently says they're not planning to advertise on smoke alarms, but none of those other appliances sound like a uh, slam dunk for advertising either. How did something like this roll out? Well, I think the key to thinking about it is not to try to think about ads, <laughs> even the way that they, they show up in, you know, on your phone or on your, uh, on your computer, which is sort of just telling you about all the things you already bought. Um, I think in order for any of this, anything like this to work, it would have to be something a little bit more like Google Now, where it's ostensibly advertising, but also giving you some sort of information that you might find interesting or useful. Like, uh, I think the good example is how Google Now recently got the ability to, uh, to remind you of things that you search for when you're walking past a store that sells them. And it's easy to see how something like that could be could be uh, an, a, uh, a way for them to sort of sell ads in a way that's not like super crass and just obnoxious, but is also like, yeah, this is an ad, but sometimes it's useful, so maybe it's okay. And it's something that people would maybe not get outraged about. Yeah, you mentioned Google Now. Google Now, I, I think, has the capacity to uh, seem a little creepy to somebody. Ooh, Google knows so much about what I might want to do tomorrow based on what I've done in the past. But in general, it's very well received. What do you think is the best use case of these ads uh, on something that we're using on a daily basis? Is it in a car? Is it in the kitchen? What do you think? The, the kitchen one is the one I have the roughest time with. Like, and, and thermostats, too, is, is a particularly uh, tough example. But I think like, uh, the, the stuff that's more location-based, like with, with Google Now, those kind of sort of things, it's easy to see how that would translate to a watch. Um, but also with cars, uh, like the idea of, you know, driving down the road and having ads blasting at you on the dashboard is kind of scary. But, you know, I think that's sort of a straw man, more of if, if Google could find a way that, you know, when you park at a, um, at a strip mall or something of, you know, letting you know things that you might be interested in that are available at different places super nearby or something more contextual like that, which, which, like hopefully they can nail down by knowing so much about you. But it really comes down to that dichotomy of like, it's kind of creepy how much they know about you, but the more they know about you, the better ads you can get. And then you can continue, you know, uh, using services for free or buying hardware that's subsidized by this sort of stuff. Yeah, so that, I guess that was my next question. Do you think there's there's a two appliance kind of a deal, a ad a uh, free version or be it a cheaper version or something that you pay top dollar for that's unlocked? Yeah, I, I have to imagine that's the way you do it um, because and there, are, there are definitely going to be people who, uh, who find this creepy or find it crass or invasive or whatever. And a lot of them are people who have, you know, 
giant internet mouthpieces. And it's easy to see how some sort of the outrage could come up. And, and, and you, can, you can tell, because uh, Amazon sort of has this nailed down with their you know, two different models of Kindle that have ads and don't have ads. But I remember, I think it was the Kindle Fire HD, or maybe it was the Kindle Fire HDX, but there was some huge hubbub when, when it came up that like maybe you wouldn't be able to get one with ads and then buy the ads off later. And, and suddenly, you know, everybody got really defensive of this. I, I really think the only way that you could pull something like this off, even if, it's, even if it turns out to be super useful, is by letting people get into it by having the option of, you know, paying off the ads and not having to worry about it. It's also interesting, uh, Google uh, did release a statement saying Nest, uh, which we were uh, acquired after this filing was made, does not have an ads-based model and has never had any such plans. Doesn't say they won't, though. Yeah, and I mean, I think not having an ad-based model and not having ads aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. I think you can have ads on a thing without it being ad-based, which would kind of imply that it would be free or like heavily subsidized or something like that. There's plenty of wiggle room in there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we will follow this story as it unfolds. Eric Leimer is the associate editor at Gizmodo. Thanks so much for joining us and tell people where they can read your work. Yep. Yeah, you can read my work. I show up on Gizmodo and I uh, tweet about a lot of things I write and a lot of things that I don't write on Twitter. Uh, just at Eric Leimer, my name there. So uh, check me out there as well. Excellent. Thanks for being here, Eric. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, finally, let's talk about pizza. Guess what tomorrow is besides, you know, the day before Friday? It's pizza day, but not just any pizza day, Bitcoin pizza day. Four years ago on May 22nd, that was back in 2010, a Bitcoin programmer named Laszlo Hanyeds offered 10,000 Bitcoins to somebody who, well, it was about $40 at the time back when Bitcoin was not really much of a thing, in exchange for two pizzas, which ended up coming from Papa John's, a volunteer in the UK ordered the pizzas, about $25, and then had them sent to Hanyes, who was the first known trader of pizza for Bitcoin. Now, if you think of that amount of Bitcoin, it would add up to about $3 million per pizza today. So that was a pretty good trade. So everybody... Enjoy Bitcoin Pizza Day tomorrow, but please purchase wisely. A calendar note before we go, Apple has confirmed its annual WWDC 2014 keynote will be held Monday, June 2nd at 10 a.m. Pacific time. It's pretty standard as usual. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us with feedback, questions, comments at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News today, tomorrow, and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.